welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Uh, or actually today's breakup map showing uh, all the rivers down here just about south of the Brooks Range now are open. Uh, lower end here open on the uh, uh, the river there, but the Noatak uh, has just areas of open water or some open areas and it's mostly ice on down toward the end. And the rivers on the north slope now starting to break up uh, a little bit. Now yesterday's satellite imagery showed the first in a couple of systems rolling right on into the southeast coast with uh, rain, gusty winds uh, moving on to the northeast, but the uh, system here, the cloud mass trailing back to the southwest connecting in on the northern edge in the next one that uh, came up today as this one moved into Northwest Canada. Well, out in the West, we had another, another system, uh, the main low center, pretty strong back over the Kamchatka Peninsula. And this uh, portion of the front right through here, pretty impressive, but uh, weakened as it dropped down over the Western Aleutians. Still brought some rain in, shifted it eastward, a break to the east over the Eastern half of the Bering Sea, right into the West Coast. And uh, afternoon clouds, scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms over the interior, mostly cloudy down here to the south with uh, wet conditions along the North Gulf Coast. And then a weak trough right through here where yesterday, that was uh, where the uh, thunderstorm activity broke out a little bit there and was really isolated elsewhere. And uh, cooler conditions back to the north with flurries over the Arctic coast and low clouds and areas of fog. While today, that uh, first system track northeastward right about through here as I start the loop out and that thing's uh, continuing off to the northeast. This next one rolled up rapidly here, brought uh, pretty gusty winds anywhere from 35 to 50 knots and rain heavy in some places like Juneau picked up two and a quarter inches of rain in the last 24 hours or less and that's uh, pushed eastward there now. So uh, rain becoming a little more intermittent, lighter, more showery but the uh, front here trailing down across the southern uh, portions there. So Prince of Wales Island, Annette, Yakutat, probably all, all the way up to Petersburg, still seeing some rain here on this shot, which was at 3 p.m. And then you can see the uh, low center tracking north, uh, very close to Yakutat, with a uh, return flow bringing moisture westward from the southeast interior and then uh, pushing it southeastward there on the western flank of the low center. And that's what brought the rain into uh, Kenai Peninsula and these areas, Northern Cook Inlet, during the day today, spreading northward. Otherwise, some clearing back to the northwest, a little bit partly sunny or mostly cloudy over the Koyukuk Valley uh, from the upper Yukon, then becoming mostly sunny, the Kobuk Valley into the northwest interior south of the Brooks Range. Not a bad day for the Seward Peninsula. This front coming eastward uh, pushed some rain into the southwest coast this afternoon. And that extends uh, southward across the Alaska Peninsula with uh, gusty southeast winds along in advance of the front. And then the showers uh, lingering over the eastern Aleutians. They cut off uh, pretty dramatically there. And it's basically dry out here to the west until you get out to Shimia with the next uh, surge of moisture is pushing some rain into that area. Otherwise, a main low center with that uh, hanging way back to the west out here. So this front uh, really weakening by the hour here and uh, rain to the Perbolofs, again down to the eastern Aleutians, that's moving slowly eastward with some light rain along the southwest coast. Inland areas, uh, mostly right through here, the thunderstorm activity today, uh, possibly up here, but it looks like uh, this afternoon, at least up until this point, it's been right here where most of the sunshine has been, most unstable area right there with uh, scattered, isolated thunderstorms, otherwise uh, showers back up to the northwest. They're mostly north of the White Mountains and then the areas of uh, showers and rain wrapping back around here, coming into Northern Cook Inlet, drying out down to the south on uh, toward the southern areas to some sunshine around Kodiak Island, as well as Northeast Bristol Bay, back up across the deltas. 
and the southeast coast. Uh, rain again pushing eastward, changing to showers, holding over the southern areas till that front pushes through. And then this trough here swinging some more rain up along the north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, and back to the northwest here. But again, drying out from uh, southwest to northeast here gradually, as we'll see tonight. This front uh, really weakening now. I probably could have just dashed it in at this point, but uh, definitely can tell the precipitation fields narrowed on it back through here, almost breaking up a little bit while this sliding off to the southeast here. So stays wet over the Alaska Peninsula, mostly from about uh, east of Cold Bay, west of Cold Bay, or from Cold Bay West. Looks like uh, showers will become quite isolated later tonight for the uh, Fox Islands there. Dry for the Perbolofs, just uh, mostly cloudy skies, westerly breezes and a chance of rain may reach, may reach uh, St. Lawrence Island, but uh, probably not. And then showery conditions here from the uh, yukon Kuskokwim Delta area, definitely in the Kuskokwim Valley, all the way up into the Tanana Valley. Isolated thunderstorms this evening, stays fair and dry. Seward Peninsula, Kobuk, Selawak Valley areas in the northwest coast, and still some flurries, uh, nothing accumulating, mostly cloudy, just keeping the flying conditions down there. And whatever falls here in the eastern areas will be or south on the east there will be a mixed uh, variety with means uh, cactovical state in the flurries and we got one slow center pulling off to the east a little bit of a breakthrough here but then pretty showery over the interior with that trough along the north gulf coast uh, keeping the showers in there and uh, tomorrow actually tuesday uh, some, for Tuesday, lost the uh, tomorrow map, but for Tuesday we've got uh, the front, uh, or for tomorrow, that or the original front here stretches across some showers into the southwest area. It's really considerably weakening, and then uh, the next system, this would be Tuesday, that uh, pushes into the western Aleutians tomorrow afternoon, bringing more rain and wind in there, and the low center will track slowly northeast. The front will push eastward tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and on Tuesday, it'll roughly be in about this position. So this one will hit St. Lawrence Island with some rain. Rain spreading into the uh, Seward Peninsula area. And actually a big slug of moisture along this uh, boundary here, which basically stays in place with the first one washing out, uh, slides northeastward uh, tomorrow night and slips right on up across the southwest interior. The good shot of rain coming up here. Some of that could be uh, moderate here, especially along the north coast of Bristol Bay and over the mountainous terrain sliding north word there looks uh, pretty wet chance of rain all the way up to Kotzebue possibly and then eastward along this trough uh, this precipitation pattern a little more convective in nature isolated thunderstorms possible more showery conditions and scattered isolated thunderstorms scattered showers isolated thunderstorms here Tanana Valley down in along the Alaska range areas but kind of a break here southwest flow but uh, dry conditions the rain still holding back toward Iliamna Lake and along and west of the Alaska Range. So this will be slipping up the Keskokwim Valley throughout the day. So clouds increasing, throw precipitation increases uh, for Nikolai and McGrath, uh, probably be into the rain for sleep mute there. And of course, back to the coast and then uh, dry for the North Gulf Coast, uh, light west winds here with uh, some possible sunshine getting over to Yakutak, Cordova, Cape Yakutaga into Prince William Sound. And uh, Showers on the decrease here from northwest to southeast. A couple of troughs slipping onto the southeast takes a pretty concentrated area of precipitation into British Columbia. So uh, showers will be tapering off and possibly ending in the afternoon for the northern areas. Otherwise, the north slope, about the same pattern there. Uh, flurries on the east side, mostly dry possibly to the west there with maybe some sunshine in the western north slope. And uh, anyway, for the temperatures along the panhandle this afternoon. Looks something like this, uh, lower 50s from Elfin Cove to Sitka on down to Klawak, 52 degrees, 53 in Petersburg, Skagway up to 55. Uh, pretty uniform temperatures with all the wind and rain and clouds down there. Yakutat at 49, 50 degrees Cordova, 44 at Gulcana, kind of chilly there with uh, actually upper 40s here for Cook Inlet all the way up to Palmer with 48 degrees. Same thing there at Homer, 50 degrees in Seward, but uh, Talkeetna up to 61, and uh, breaking out there at Kodiak, 60 degrees, otherwise Akiak at 52. Up in the uh, central interior, temperatures lower in the mid 60s with 64 at Tanana, Fairbanks 62, chilling off to about 58, both at uh, Delta and over at Fort Yukon, 64 
or Eagle 58 for Yukon back up to 64 and a nice 62 at Bettles and then down into the upper 20s to uh, lower 30s over the Arctic coast, Kaktovik up to 33. 30s over the northwest, 37 Kivalina, Kotzebue just 31 degrees, 42 at Nome, 50 degrees Unicleat, St. Michael 52, and a 58 at McGrath, mid to upper 50s all the way down the river valleys there out to the deltas to uh, upper 40s along the coast. Savunga 36 above, Pribilofs lower 40s, mid 40s, eight Akanatka, as well as Unalaska, and uh, all the wind or the rain with that, keeping it mid to upper 40s there for the Alaska Peninsula. But King Salmon in the sunshine pushed up to 60. Lows for tonight, uh, 30s here along the coast, uh, rising into around 40 as you head northeast. Warmest locations here for the interior, up over the uh, Copper River or the Upper Yukon Valley areas and southward, and then the Copper River Basin falling back into the upper 30s, upper mid, mid to upper 40s for the Panhandle. And for tomorrow, for highs, uh, not too bad for May, but not all that warm either. But uh, nice 60s here through the central interior, possibly again for the Susitna Valley. And the Panhandle, mid-50s there, 40s out west here for the Alaska Peninsula Aleutians, falling into the upper 30s at St. Lawrence Island. Arctic coast, uh, maybe everybody will slide up to or above the 30-degree mark. And for flying weather, tomorrow morning, IFR here along the southwest coast, St. Lawrence Island down across the Alaska Peninsula, areas of along the North Gulf Coast, and tending to break up over the Panhandle, and then that southerly flow, look for some IFR in the southern slopes of the Alaska Range, and then uh, out to the west, uh, off to the southwest there of uh, Kamchatka and Kiska Islands. For tomorrow afternoon, that kind of slides eastward here, but uh, becomes a little more expansive. So IFR for ADAC, definitely for ATCA. Northward, chance of IFR at times for the Pribilof Island, St. Lawrence Island. Better conditions on the Arctic coast, north slope areas and marginal conditions. Marginal VFR on the uh, upslope areas of the Alaska Range, western and central. And then quite an area of IFR, uh, more moisture slipping on up here into the southern panhandle there. Probably some rain, while the northern areas will see uh, showers. And for Anatovic, passes looking good, wide open for Anatovic. Well, there'll be some clouds, but it'll be VFR type clouds. Won't be uh, ceilings visibilities unlimited. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal at times. Same forecast for rainy, marginal at, at times. Same, and windy, w marginal VFR, lowest conditions on the southern entrance. And for Isabel, starting out VFR becoming marginal in the afternoon. And for Mentasta though, it'll be remain. VFR. And for Tanita, look for marginal VFR improving to VFR in the afternoon. Portage marginal VFR, still a risk of some IFR conditions here on the eastern entrance. And for uh, Chilkoot and White, marginal. For the freezing levels, uh, four to 6,000 feet from the Seward Peninsula up to 6,000 feet over the eastern interior. And still uh, with that uh, the jet here got the gradient from six to 10,000 feet across the southern panhandle, two to 4,000 feet over the southern Bering and Aleutians. Icing, most uh, again, another batch of moisture slipping on up uh, tomorrow, so that's going to hit the southern southeast coast with some areas of light to isolated moderate rime icing above about 6,000 feet, uh, possible uh, mixed icing chances over the northern panhandle. And the same thing here through the interior, just some areas of possible mixed icing extending up across the upper Yukon Valley. And then the next batch here of mainly rime icing pushing eastward to the Pribilofs into the central Aleutians. Jet stream westerlies right along the Aleutians takes a turn to the north across the southern southeast coast at about 100 knots, upper level low here south of the Kenai Peninsula. 9,000 foot winds, uh, low off to, off to the southwest, so some ridging here across the southeast coast. Definitely lighter winds tomorrow, light winds over the interior. Easterlies 10 to 15 along the Arctic coast, and then some westerly winds here, 25 to 40 knots, strongest out over the western Aleutians. That pattern also at 3,000 feet. Call it 20 to 35, but the strongest winds out here over the west. Northwesterlies 20 to 30 across the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence-wise, uh, mechanical moderate chop here along the Alaska Peninsula. More so for uh, here about false pass across eastern Aleutians as well as out to the west. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. It's one of the beautiful days. More, more times you hear these 
seagulls all the time, you know. But there was none that day. It was spooky quiet. I looked down and there was a box of 22 shells and I said, wow. I reached down to pick those up and I said, man, this is going to be my lucky day. We were just about ready to make the set when we felt this tapping vibration in the bottom of the skiff. And you know, if you heard this roll rumble, rolling rumble. We didn't know what it was. If it was severe. And it started rolling. And it was just ugh, like that first. You gotta remember this was during the Cold War. My immediate thoughts were of a nuke anchorage. It was just awesome. All hell broke loose and the ground started rocking and rolling. And uh, my little buddy told me earthquake run. So we started running. The earth was opening up right across the street, right in front of me. And the black water was shooting up in the air about, I would say, 15 to 30 feet. The top of the foam pole snapping off. The trees were whipping back and forth. And it just kept right on and shaking. And as, as it got long, further along, it was worse. As we stood there on the corner, the first of the standard oil tanks began to explode. Hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of gallons of fuel that were burning. And it burned and burned and burned. It was light as day that night, except for the black soot that was falling. March 27, 1964. Alaska had experienced the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in North America. The magnitude 9.2 quake left Anchorage and other communities devastated. And although there would be aftershocks for weeks, for most of Alaska, the worst was over. But for many coastal communities, the horror was only beginning. The mega-scale earthquake sent multiple killer tsunamis onto Alaska's shores. Most fatalities occurred in Seward, Valdez, and Kodiak. The channel completely emptied out. You could actually see the bottom of the channel. And, and we should have realized, I guess, that the water was going to come in rapidly, but we were fairly ignorant of the tsunami. There was no cresting wave. It was just this huge surge that came up. And took the what boats are left in the harbor and basically rolled them around town. So it come way up in and washed all of that, uh, washed all of the town out down below, just everything, everything. It turned and started running, and, and it happened about as fast as I just told you. When the water went back out, it went down through this channel, just whoosh. It may have been uh, like 20 or 30 knots of current going through that channel. It's incredible. of man in a boat with no oars or nothing. He was just sitting there, just probably just paralyzed, you know. And he was going around and around. Over 30 people died in, on Kodiak Island. Uh, it was relatively sparsely populated. It happened at a uh, time of day when most people were away from the harbor and the, and the businesses downtown. They were at home already. And if it had happened in the earlier, uh, it was a loss of life would have been a lot higher. Kodiak's devastation was caused by the main tsunami wave that was triggered out in the Gulf of Alaska. But Seward experienced a phenomenon called local tsunamis, which were generated by landslides in nearby Resurrection Bay. These waves were far more dangerous than the main tsunami, which struck later. Bob Eads and his brother were south of town on Lowell Point when the first locally generated wave hit. The first wave came in way over in that direction that's when the ocean was boiling with them big boils there and it went clear over fourth of july at treetop level over there and clear around to the head of the bay clear out to the airport and clear into the small boat harbor and then headed toward mount marathon 
and uh, took the small boat harbor out. Bob and his brother jumped into their pickup truck and tried to escape. I didn't, I couldn't uh, outrun it, and it overtook us, and uh, it was under about 15 feet of, of uh, water. That covered us up, and it got awful dark. It was blacker than the inside of a goat, you know. We thought, well, uh, it's uh, uh, just about the end. And then it, we seen the daylight come. The water went down and back out. The brothers miraculously survived, but what no one knew was that the main tsunami from the Gulf was bearing down on Seward. The water just completely emptied right out of the bay. You couldn't see anything. At Resurrection Bay, it's approximately 900 feet deep, and what just startled me looking out there was there was no water, absolutely no water as far as you can see. The bay is 18 miles deep and uh, two to three miles wide, and I could see no water at all, and I commented to my dad about it, and that should have been our warning sign to turn around and get out of there, but we didn't. Coming back into the bay was this big swell. I mean, great big swell. And it, was, it wasn't a round one like it went out. It was combing at the top. And somebody screaming, get out, get out. Tsunami coming, tidal wave coming. Get out, get out, go to high ground. It was uh, this barge and it had a big crane right at the back of it. It was just like a skier, and he was just skiing right going out of town with this big swell. And as I went around the corner and started up the hill, well, the, the box cars and the railroad tracks and, or railroad uh, cars hit me right in the back of the wrecker, and I would say probably pushed me up the hill about 20 or 30 feet. By then, Doug McRae and his family had scrambled onto the roof of their house. It took a while, while. It was like a surf ride. There was power lines that we were worried about getting scraped off the roof. It was tree limbs, and we were spinning and bouncing off trees. And this, this one, I'm, I, I'm just guessing maybe 10 minutes. And we got wedged in amongst some big trees, big cottonwood trees. Power had gone off. The sewers were gone. The water was gone. There was absolutely nothing left in the way of utility. All the docks had completely disappeared. There were just a few, a few stumps sticking up there. Just really a mess. And uh, basically for us, Seward was gone. Because uh, our livelihood was gone, our, our employment was gone, the canneries were gone. And finally I turned to my mother and said to her, well, Mom, there goes your All-America City. And we laughed. Looking at the sea ice analysis for today, uh, Still some heavier ice up here north side of the Seward Peninsula, Shishmaref on back in toward Kotzebue Sound. And then also up here over Norton Bay in the northeast there and on the south coast. But Norton Sound starting to open up uh, really nicely now. And then uh, this stuff down here, that's really uh, trading on some thin water there. And it'll probably be gone in the next couple of days. And uh, everything uh, just otherwise continuing its slow progression into summer and melting away. Moving on to marine forecasts, a lot less wind tomorrow than today here along the southeast coast, coming down to just 10 to 15 knots out of the south, southeast on the north side. And for uh, Lynn Canal, south 25, northern Lynn Canal, otherwise uh, winds down pretty good here, 15. Still about 20 knots though for uh, Clarence Strait, seas down to four feet. And then for Tuesday, uh, winds switch around. Now there's northerly small craft advisories here for much of the coastline out of the north and up to 30 knots all the way down to the south with uh, seas eight to nine feet and northwest winds 15 knots for at least three inside water marine zones here, which are Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage Northern Lynn Canal. For Prince William Sound, southeasterlies at about 20 tomorrow, becoming south there for the eastern North Gulf Coast, back to the west, southwest here for the western coast, down across the uh, Barren Islands, and 15 to 20 knot winds, Kodiak Island, Kachemak Bay, into Cook Inlet, turning south of 20, north of the Forelands. And then for uh, Tuesday, not a lot of change, south 20 again in the afternoon. Of course, stronger gusts coming out of Turnigan Arm. That'll probably mostly be tomorrow. Otherwise, it'll become a little more westerly. And we're looking at west at about 15 for Prince William Sound, southwest 25 for the North Gulf Coast. The small craft advisory is there, but seas only at about 7 feet, west 20 for Kachemak Bay. 
Small Craft Advisories, Kodiak Island, Shillikoff Street, and, Katch and Kachemak Bay, 20 knots for the Barrens. And for uh, Bristol Bay, Southwest 20, otherwise Westerlies, 25 knots for the Alaska Peninsula, all the way up to Sitkanak. Tuesday, gales come in. Pretty good uh, system pulling in here, so south to southwest, 35 knots for the Alaska Peninsula, coming up to 25 knots for uh, Bristol Bay, and then uh, 30 knot winds all the way up to Sitkanak. For the Fox Islands, southwesterly is 25 to 30 knots. That extends all the way out to Shimia with seas uh, 9 to 13 feet. Tuesday, westerlies now, 25 knots, still good for small craft advisories. And we've got gales on the south side of the central Aleutians all the way up and include all of the Fox Islands, both sides. Then for the southwest coast, uh, small craft advisories south of Nunavak Island with westerlies there, southwest 25 for the Pribilof, south 24 St. Matthew Island. And on Tuesday, southerlies along the coast, uh, only at about 15 knots, southeast 15 St. Lawrence Island, southwest 15 for the Pribilofs. And up along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, central coast, uh, 10 knots from there over to Demarcation Point. Uh, increased a little bit, 15 knots, turned northerly at 20 knots from Cape Beaufort southward to the Bering Strait. Outlook for Tuesday. There we go. North at 15. Really not a lot of change. It's a tad lighter there. And uh, northeast for the central coast to the west. Easterlies at 10, staying light on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, uh, Keep the flurries up in that area there and uh, maybe some mixed showers south of the coast range. Otherwise, that system moves through, winds diminish, and rain changes more showery conditions. The trough keeps it wet along the North Gulf Coast here. Isolated thunderstorms possible this evening. Otherwise, uh, quite a bit of shower activity here from Northern Cook Inlet right into the central interior. This one not really washing out that batch of rain, having the trouble, having a hard time getting inland. Scatters out the showers, the next system out to the west. Tomorrow we'll push eastward and... Uh, These forecasts gosh. are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.